All right, so just an additional maybe half a lecture um, of some left over bits. So I want to present one more application of the existential theory of the reals as a complexity class to game theory. And um, I, out I outlined the result already last time, um, but let me state everything again. So um, I'll talk about what has been phrased in the literature by Umels and Wojtzak as um, simple stochastic multiplayer games. And this here is joint work with Stefan Janssen. Um, so what is a simple stochastic multiplayer game? So we are given a directed graph. And we have a designated start node, some place we start um, the game. And then um, non-leaf nodes of the graph are divided into nodes of players and chance nodes. Um, and they belong just to one player. So the rule of the game is that in a, um, in a player node, so a non-leaf node belonging to a given player, that player gets to choose a successor. And chance nodes, we have a probability distribution over successors. Um, the leaves nodes, we have payoffs to the players um, in the definition of Umels and Wojtzak. They just say that in leaf nodes, players receive either payoff zero or payoff one. Um, you can simulate then any number between zero and one by chance nodes taking convex combinations of zero one vectors. Um, you could also have a model where you, where you allow for negative um, payoffs if you like, but let's just stick to positive payoffs today. Yeah, so maybe not, not quite positive, but at least non-negative. So maybe one example we could we could say. So this is really due to um, Boros and, and Gervitz. So it's a three-player game, and it's on a graph with three uh, nodes. Um, so I'll write the player who owns the node inside the node, and so they own one node each, and they get to play in turns, and they can they have the option of giving the turn to the next player. But they also have the option of um, receiving payoffs. So in this case here, player one would receive um, um, payoff two, and then 
so I put the vector 2, 1, 3 here, so it means that player 1 receives 2, player 2 receives um, 1, and player 3 receives 3 in this case. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to make it symmetric so that the view of player 1 is, this, um, is the same as the view of player 2 just starting here. So it means that player 2 is here is receiving 2, and um, player 2, player 3 is receiving 1, and, um, and then player 1 is receiving 3. So I think this is, this is what I want. Um, and then we would have a, actually a chance node that would be the initial node where we just pick uniformly at random a starting place of this game. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll draw that node in the middle by a diamond, say, and um, so we go to these probability one third each. So you could also think about, um, yeah, so, so this is what is happening. And um, a strategy of a player, what would that be? That is that um, the, a player needs to make a choice whenever play enters the node belonging to that player. So we start here. And um, that means that we go to some node, maybe node two, and in this case, player two has to make a choice whether to go here or here. In this case here, the game stops in the Leafs nodes, and players receive this payoff. Otherwise, if player two goes here, player three gets to make the turn, and it can go back, and player two gets to make a, a choice again. And this can be now chosen completely independent on the, on the previous choice. Of course, it's only relevant if, if player two actually chose to go here. Um, but maybe player two could keep a count of how many times um, play has gone around in the, in the cycle and make the strategy depend on that. So a strategy is mapping prefixes of play or the history of play so far into choices in the given node. Um, so I'll not write that down, but, um, or maybe I actually will, so yeah, let, why not? So it's a, and it's deciding also probability distribution. So it's assigning a assignment of probability distribution um, to any finite history of play ending in a node belonging to the player. Um, so that is a general mixed, uh, or let's say probabilistic strategy that, that the player can choose to have. Um, you can also talk about a pure strategy. So a pure strategy would be that all probability distributions are just, um, are just point distributions. So choosing a single action with probability one always. In this talk, we'll be interested in stationary um, strategies so a stationary strategy is um, a strategy that does not depend on the history of play, so it only depends on the current note of play. So in particular, a stationary strategy, or in this game here, so that would be that, um, and a strategy profile would be that each player have just chosen a probability with which to quit the game. And um, that will be done every time the same node is entered. Um, the solution concept that we'll be interested in is, the, is that of Nash equilibrium, again, just basic Nash equilibrium. 
Um, so once we have fixed, fixed a strategy profile, we also then get um, payoffs of each player. So that is the expected um, payoff at a terminal node when that is reached. We might also have infinite play, and in that case, um, a player get payoff zero. So if a leaf node is never reached, the payoff of all players is zero. All right. Um, so a Nash equilibrium is a strategy profile where no player has any incentive to unilaterally change to a different strategy. No, they, they, they cannot. Okay. No, no, me neither. So. So there are infinite stages that will not be simulated by stationary. Right. Yeah. That there are some, or there are some strategies, infinite strategies. They could not be that that are not stationary. That could be simulated by uh, could not be simulated by stationary. Right. You could, you could acquire more. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. This is very um, uh, well, I, I don't know if if I gave the answer or not. Um, it's um, let me just do this example, then maybe say 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 just a little bit. Um, so so here a stationary strategy would be that each player gets to exit with a certain probability, and you can see that. Um, well, if no player actually exits the game, then we just um, continue around in a cycle and all players receive pay of zero. And um, that's not good, then it would be better for, for a player just to exit with some probability. Um, and it's, here it's quite easy to see that um, a pure stationary strategy profile cannot be a, a Nash equilibrium. So suppose that one of the players exits the, the cycle, it could be player one. Um, then you can see that um, um, then player two, play would end up here, player two would get one, but it would be, player two would be better off going to two. Then player three would be better off actually quitting also getting three, but then player one would be better off continuing. Um, no, sorry, how is it, how is my logic here? So if player one exits, um, right, then then player, if player one exits, then uh, player three prefers to exit. And um, uh, maybe I did, no wait. Yeah, yeah, that's player three, so here. Player two prefers to exit and Oh yeah, in this case, of course, if player two prefers to exit, then player one prefers to continue the game, etc. So you can actually show that there are no stationary Nash equilibrium in, in even such a simple, simple game. Um, so, we are interested in not the existence question of a of an S equilibrium, at least to begin with, but we're interested in um, a payoff constraint Nash equilibrium. So we're looking at the following decision problem. So suppose what we are given a game and um, let's say we have M players. And then we have some targets that the players need to meet. So we have numbers, let's call them um, T1 to Tm. We want to ask, is there a stationary Nash equilibrium um, where 
to your i receives payoff at least ti. This is for, for all i. Um, all right, so of course you could maybe think that maybe hardness already comes from the fact that there are games without any Nasser Klebrium. Um, so this was studied earlier by Umels and Wojcik, and they proved that it, this problem here is actually, um, they proved that it is NP hard, and it is square root sum hard. Um, so I mentioned what that means in my, in my first lecture, but um, we'll not need this, so, so you can just um, look it up. Or, or don't care about it. Um, the theorem I would, I would end up proving is that this here is in fact um, complete for the existential theory of the reals. Um, so I'm going to construct a game where this problem is complete for the existential theory of the reals. And it's complete even for acyclic games, meaning that the graph is acyclic. One thing which is nice about acyclic games is that we are guaranteed existence of a NASA equilibrium. Um, so that just follows from backwards induction. We can start with leaf nodes and, and move towards the, um, move up in the game. And at every node, we just make one best choice for each player. So that's a backwards induction solution. But this might not um, satisfy these payoff constraints. So this is what gives you the, the computational hardness. Yeah, so so p players receive receive payoff at leaf nodes. So, so is yeah, you can you can think of you, if you like to. Th yeah, I know you you like to think of it as an outcome. Then I'll I'll say it's it's zero. So here you can assume that cycle is worse. The worst. So, so this here is essentially your example, mm -hmm. and there is no no Nash equilibrium in this in this okay. example. But then you say you can prove this, or this is random position of chance. Yeah, you can prove even for deterministic. Yeah. Uh, let me actually prove what I, what I can do and, and make precise statements. Um, also to make, make it coherent and, and, and fit together. Um, so this is what I, I aim to prove. Yeah, this was just one example I just uh, described um, as, as saying what is these sorts of games. So you the number of players is a part of so here, yeah, you could consider that part of the input, but um, our result actually holds for for constant number of players. Um, so, uh, with seven players. Um, so you'll see from the from the construction. Um, so this here is also something I described in the in the first and, and second lecture. And um, to make it self-contained, I'll just describe what is a complete problem, which I described in previous lecture, and use that to make a reduction to to this problem here. And the membership, well, then you also need to know about the class. So, but you can just see this is an easy to state. Um, property of an S equilibrium. So you can just guess non-deterministically a strategy, a stationary strategy profile, then you can compute the payoffs of each player and then just check that it satisfies the, the given um, constraint. That gives you membership. Or you could write down a first order formula, an existential first order formula if, if you like. Um, all right, so let me write down the, the problem that will reduce from, oh, yeah, let's put it here. Um, 
Yeah, so this will just be um, a version of the quad problem over the unit simplex. Um, and it's homogeneous. Yeah, so let me, <laughs> let me call it that. So we are given homogeneous polynomials of degree two. So we simply want to ask, is there actually a root of this system, a solution to the system in the unit simplex? So it means that it's, they are in n plus one variables. Um, yeah, let me mention, so this year was Ummels and, and Wojtzak. But actually, um, actually, previous to that, um, Littmann, Ravi, and Talvar, and Sinkiewicz, They have proven it to be NP hard um, in trees with two players. So this result here is also with two players, but it's actually a cyclic graph. Um, and uh, here they use some, some more players. But I will not be too concerned about trying to minimize the number of players or, or anything. It's, it will be a, a fixed constant. You're asking a question, uh, is it not important? Yeah, in trees, every, every strategy is stationary. Yes, yes. Um, <coughs> that's right. <coughs> so, my goal is to, um, to make the, the reduction. Um, so we'll build, a, build the game up by, by having several players. And um, so we're building up a game where one of the players have to actually choose this point here, choose the probability distribution x, um, which is going to be the root of the system if payoff demands are actually met. So that's um, a first sub game or gadget of our proof to, to write up um, to write up such a small game where one player is actually choosing the probability distribution. Um, all right, so it starts here and um, we begin having a, a chance node. And yeah, actually let me, for my own sake, uh, switch to n variables just to be sane. Um, so 
we start out with a chance node and it makes a, um, it splits uniformly into n nodes. And I'll call these v1 up to vn. So we go with probability one over n to each of these. And these nodes will be player one nodes. And um, then player one gets to make a binary choice here. And um, the intuition is that player one at node vi needs to make the choice of the assignment of probability to the variable xi. So it's going to be this, this binary choice. Um, into two nodes. And um, these will be terminal or leaf nodes. So I'll annotate this, this graph by, by the probabilities assigned to, these, to this choice. So Player one will choose this one with probability x1 and this one with 1 minus x1, x2 and 1 minus x2, xn, 1 minus xn. And then we're going to set up some, some rewards here or payoffs. And um, so I'm going to have seven players. So I'll only write payoffs which are non-zero. So payoffs will be um, non-negative numbers. Um, all players will receive zero unless I actually write that they get something positive. And um, player, player one is actually receiving payoff zero. And the reason for that is that we, we want player one to have complete freedom in choosing the probability distribution for x. So player one can choose freely what is the probability assigned to any variable xi. Um, and I'll set it up so I have four players that receive payoff. And um, in the XI case, I'll have that players two and four, they receive payoff one. So I'll use this notation here. So two comma four. No, no, they're assigned to player one. All of these are assigned to, yeah. So I just denote these notes by, yeah, so over there I wrote the player inside. Now I, I call these nodes by names. I denote the player here by, by a green letter. Um, I denote payoffs here in this format here. So it means that in this particular terminal, player one receives payoff zero, player two, one, player three, zero, player four, one, and the other players also zero. Um, down here I get three and five get, get one and that's repeated throughout. And it means that now we can, now we can see what, what are the payoff profile um, to any strategy profile of the players. So here only player one is actually choosing a, a strategy profile. And the strategy profile is determined by, by these probabilities here. So I'll, I'll call these x, put them in a vector of, of length n. So x1 up to xn. What is payoff of player one? This is first number? No. So here I wrote, these are numbers of players. Yes. There's a colon. And this here is a payoff to these players. So you get one of the two? Excuse me? Uh, how many players? Seven? I'll have seven players. And you have to define payoff. Yeah, so player one receives, in this leaf node, player one receives payoff zero. zero yeah, okay. Player two receives one, player three receives zero, one, yeah, so zero. Excuse me? Oh, okay, yeah, I, I mean, I could write down the, uh, yeah, I could write down the vector if you prefer the. Okay, I'll, I'll write one, one vector here. I'm going to erase it real soon, but... Um, okay. 
Uh, okay, I'll write one more. That's the, uh, uh, this is the last one I'm, I'm going to write in the game. Um, this one here. In, in, this, in this gadget here. Okay. So we can observe that the payoff profile is actually the following. So player one receives payoff zero, and um, player two receives the, the mean of, of xi's. So the one norm of x divided by n. Um, player three receives um, one minus that, um, right? Player four and, and five get the same thing, so I need to repeat that one more time. And um, six and seven just get zero here. Um, so my first goal would be to ensure that this, that X is actually describing a probability distribution. So I want that the, that the one norm is actually equal to one, right? So I can do that easily by setting up um, payoff constraints of the players. So if I just, if I only had this game here, so later it'll be different, but if I just had this game here, then I needed that, um, I needed this one to be one, so I need to set up the constraint that player two receives um, one over n. And I set up the constraint saying that um, player three receives one minus one over n. And if I do this, then I have ensured that X is actually a probability distribution. All right, so by say, taking this gadget plus some constraints, we get that we have actually a probability distribution. Um, so now we, we just need to make sure that we have a solution to the system. So we need to, to ensure that each polynomial actually evaluates to zero on the chosen X by designing a game and setting off payoff constraints. So let me, for brevity, write the following thing. Um, so it's homogeneous, so, so I'll write it in the following form here. Sum from one to N of I and J. Then I have the coefficients here. Um, a i j k and I have x i and x j. Um, so, so just to introduce some notation for this. And I'll assume that these coefficients lie between minus one and one. So I can easily achieve this just by dividing by a suitable number. Um, no. Well, not yet, um, because this is not the full game. So, but I was saying, <coughs> so I was saying, <coughs> if this is actually the full game, then I then I stipulate that player two receives one over n, player three receives one minus one over n. And that implies that x is a probability distribution. Um, so what I would like to do is to take these variables and multiply them together. Um, so I already have these variables lying here. And um, if I go, if I start in this node here, we can see that the payoff to player two and four is exactly equal to x1. And here the payoff to player, starting here, the payoff to player three and five is, x, is exactly equal to one minus x1, et cetera. 
So I'll use these to, to extract out these variables and be able to multiply them together. Um, so this will be the, the multiplication gadget. Now I need my space back. So this is where I'm going to use um, additional players. Um, I'm going to reuse, um, yeah, so I'm actually not, um, I'm actually not using player, player six and seven for, for anything, anything interesting. So they, they don't do anything in the game. Um, they just accumulate payoff. And then we set up final constraints to make sure that um, their, their constraints wouldn't say all the polynomials evaluate to zero. So I'll reuse player one to five in this multiplication gadget. And um, so we start here. And I'm going to have first two nodes here. This is player two and, and player three. And what they and this is for this is for multiplying. Um, so let's call this something here. Let's call it D alpha i j. Um, so first, we'll we'll we want to extract the variable x i, and we do this by allowing player two and player three to to both have an escape to the node v i. So that's the node we have over here in this gadget. Um, then player one gets to, to do something. And player one gets to a, to a terminal here or continues. And um, then we have the other two players And player one gets to do something. Um, so this would be player four and five. This is player one again. Um, the idea here is that we want player one to play this choice here, continue in the game with probability xi, and here continue with probability xj. And this means that this final terminal will be reached with probability xi times xj, assuming these other players um, continue along this line. So let me write down the probability of, the, of player one who is actually playing this node. Let me call it xi prime. And then this one here is 1 minus xi prime. And I want this one here to be xj prime. And this is 1 minus xj prime. Um, now I want to, um, so given this gadget here, I can sort of think of these as being terminal nodes. I know what happens here in, in vi. I know that player. 2 is receiving um, payoff xi, and player 3 is receiving payoff 1 minus xi. So let me just write this down. Um, that is what we know. All right, so what I want to do here is to um, give player one and three um, payoff one. And, um, and why is this? So player one represents the, the payoff one minus xi and 
I go, player one goes down here with probability one minus xi prime, and I actually want xi prime to be equal to xi, so I copy down the value of xi. So in this, in this way, I need to actually ensure that player three also gets, by continuing, I want that player three gets at least this to, to make sure that player three has no incentive to actually escape to vi. So I need to give player three payoff one here um, in order to make sure that xi prime is less than or equal to xi. Um, and this means I'll give player two here, um, I'll give player two payoff of one over here in the end. Um, no matter which terminal we end, we end in here. So this is what I'll be doing. So here I get one and two, and um, actually also player four is getting payoff one. Here it's one and two and five are getting payoff one. Others are getting payoff zero. Um, so that is the, the multiplication gadget. So what is different? So one thing which is different over here is that in this game here, player one receives payoff zero. And over here in all the internal terminals, in these three terminals, player one receives payoff one. All right, so we are gonna set up a, um, a payoff constraint to make sure that the only way to meet it for player one is that we never go to these VIs and VJs, so they only exist as, um, as threats to player one. All right, so for the analysis, let's just think of these as being terminals. And now let's suppose actually that player one receives payoff one. Well, then, um, then play ends in, in one of these three terminals. Um, and um, we can see first that starting here, player two and, and player three, we can see what they receive. So player two gets um, one minus xi prime and player three um, no sorry this is, I wanted to say player three here. Uh, no. I wanted to do player three here, so one minus xi prime. And player two gets what? So player two gets payoff, in these terminals get payoff one, so um, it means that this choice of player one doesn't matter, the only one is this one here. So player one, x, so player two gets payoff xi prime. And um, in order to actually ensure that play terminates in these terminals, we need that players um, two and three have no incentive to go to the node vi. So we need that, we need that um, xi prime is at least xi, and we need that one minus xi prime is at least one minus xi in order to have this, meaning that xi is actually equal to xi prime. Um, now, what about player four and five? So player four and five, we just need to analyze, given that we, um, we get to the player four node. So it means that we don't go to this terminal, but continue here. Then what happens? Um, it's completely similar to the 
previous case. So player four gets, gets payoff um, xj prime. And player five gets one minus xj prime. And it means we have the similar inequalities saying now, now we obtain that here we had that xi prime is equal to xi. Here we had that xj prime is actually equal to xj. So we have generally, genuinely constructed a multiplication gate um, if we set off payoff constraints. So this leaf node of the graph is re reached by with probability xi times xj. Um, and um, we'll, we'll use that to now accumulate payoffs to player six and seven. So they're getting payoff in this node here. Uh, yeah, I guess I should have, have had more space for that. So let's do this. So it was one, two, and four getting one. Then player six is getting alpha. Alpha is some parameter here. And player seven is getting one minus alpha. And this is similar to what we do here in order to, to make sure that we can meet an, an equality by two inequalities. Um, all right. So that's that. Then we need to take these multiplication gadgets. This will allow, it to, allow us to handle one term to combine into a polynomial gadget. So I, I want to um, piece these together in order to to capture one polynomial. And now I'm going to use player, uh, player six and, and seven. Um, the idea here is that that player six get in, gets an escape or threatens with, with quitting the game unless player six receives a certain payoff, likewise for player seven. And then we, we go to, um, to these multiplication gadgets and they are, we have, we have n squared many terms in a given polynomial, so we have um, n squared many outgoing edges here, each met with uniform probability one over n squared. Um, so here we put polynomial gadgets. And um, so what I'll simply do is that I will, so these coefficients were between minus one and, and one, so I want them to be non-negative. So I'll just um, shift them up and normalize. So I'll add one to all these coefficients and divide by, by two. Um, so it means that in the first case here, we are going to have um, um, yeah, what do right. So one plus a i j. Let's say this is for the case polynomial. So I take the so this is one, one to begin with. I divide by two and this is one, one and um, et cetera. So I have n squared of these. Um, so I want to make sure that, that when you go here, then the polynomial is actually zero and now I actually um, divided everything by two, that doesn't change the zero, of course, but um, I also added a half to all the, um, to all the coefficients. And then I go to each one of them with probability one over n squared. So it means that um, 
if I actually have a root, then players will, will receive payoff one over n, one over two times n squared. So that is the payoff I will give to player six and seven. All right, um, so notice here that, that these are the only players that receive any payoff, and um, in particular, player one is not receiving any payoff here. So in order to ensure that player one receives payoff, we need to go to all these multiplication gates. So it means that player six and seven needs to get um, to get payoff one, one over two times n squared um, all the way over here. Um, so that's just a simple, simple calculation now. We saw, that, um, we saw that this node is met with probability xi times xj. We multiply onto this, this thing here. So if we have a root, these will actually disappear and we just have um, a half times this and then we have one over um, n squared like, like this, and, um, and then I think we just, um, mm. all right, yeah, then I think we are, we are all good. So, If players six and seven do not go down here, then that implies that QK of X is actually equal to zero. I don't know if I should do the calculation. Um, I guess it's, I guess I should. <coughs> uh, not yet, um, but, but I can say what I can, well, I'll do the final game, but if you just look at this game here, then, this, then uh, the threshold for, for player one will be one. Um, so the, let me do the final game. Um, so this will be down here. So I'll just piece together the, the two games. So we start here and we make a 50-50 split. And um, here we put the probability distribution gadget. And down here we are doing all the, all the polynomials. So I'm gonna have a, a one over S split. Uh, so we'll split into S, uh, many nodes. with probability one over S, and I'm gonna have the, the polynomial gadgets here. So now the payoff requirements I can put here. So T1 is gonna be equal to a half because um, T1 is not receiving any payoff in the, sorry, player one is not receiving any payoff in the probability distribution gadget, but we want player one to receive payoff one in all terminals in, inside these gadgets. So that's a half, and we put also for player two and player three, um, no, so for player two, we put, um, We put uh, so what do we do over here? Right. These guys. Yeah, okay. Here need to do. Here need to add something. So, so I, I forgot to do the calculation in, in advance here. Um, 
So we need to figure out how much payoff player two gets. Um, so one that player two gets payoff, in this gadget here, player two should get um, one over n. So that that is done by one over two n, and then we need to add whatever player two is receiving over here. And um, so how much is that? Um, yeah, and all these polynomials. Okay, I, I, I forgot to to do this calculation. Um, I'll write down what it is. Um, an easy f so 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 this was done just to save two players. So what I could do actually is to have to have more players. Um, so I could have two additional players that that wants to have one over two times n, just in the probability distribution get it. Um, but if you here I have reused player two and player three, so I don't know this was an optimization, but for now I I forgot the threshold. Um, and maybe I don't want to do it online. Um, anyway, so 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 that was the complete proof of that. Um, the construction. Was it any questions about about anything? Do you have an example? Can, that's very important. The thresholds are important. Do you have an example uh, uh, such that just existence is hard or complete in some sense? Some You're asking. Yeah. So I, uh, I I mentioned yesterday that you could prove that the existence question of a stationary Nash equilibrium without any constraints whatsoever is complete for the existence of C of the reals. In which class of game? Deterministic game? No. No. no not. Uh, there, there is an example. You, you, you need this yeah, one here. Yeah, yeah OK. This, you, you, but there is an example uh, such that the deterministic game, no, no positions of chance. And uh, no, no Nash equilibrium given in mixed strategies. There is, or there is such example. I can show you. But can you prove for such? Uh, uh, it's, it's okay, so um, yeah, I, this year is sort of leading ahead. But but let let me say what you can do. So. Um, so the way to get these these things would be to to also have a, a thread with with that. So maybe I'll suppose that you have a game where you know there is no stationary strategy. Right? So then you make a new game where you start here, and um, one player can go to to this game here. That's a gadget game where we have no stationary strategy, uh, no stationary Nash equilibrium inside this one. And, um, and then, then over here we go to, to the above game um, that we just constructed. So let us call it the, the quad game. So the quad game is is gonna have a it's gonna have some payoff constraints for for the players um, that needs to be met. Um, so and then it has so, so yeah, so it's hard for the it's complete for the existence theory of the reals to decide if this quad game has a stationary Nash equilibrium with um, certain payoffs for for certain players. All right, so down here we need a game where there is no stationary Nash equilibrium and play always terminates in a terminal, and um, here we'll. Have these will give the players their their payoff 
requirements down here. Um, and then, yeah, so we'll actually make it, make it in turn. So every player that has a player of requirement will have the option of, of, com of continuing or actually exiting to the game without a stationary Nash equilibrium. So in this way, if, if there's a stationary Nash equilibrium, then it's guaranteed that in here they meet the payoff requirements, otherwise they would be better off exiting to the, to the threat game. Yeah, okay, I mean, yeah, I was just describing the idea. Um, so, suppose here you have player one has some, has some thing um, and can choose to continue or exit to this threat game here. And we make sure that, that um, player one, in this game, player one should get payoff um, T1. There might be more players that have, that, ha that have some guarantees, so they each get to exit here and we'll put all the guarantees as payoffs down here in all terminals. So that's the idea. Cycle. Okay. Oh, let's say all cycles was equivalent. Okay. Yeah. I mean, here in this model I described, there's only payoff, only non-zero payoff at the terminals. So, so pay payoffs. And, are and all terminal payoffs are non-negative. Yeah. Okay. But uh, cycle also the outcome. There are some. Payoffs, like in this example, it may happen that cycle appears. Here, yeah, so in this case here, it's payoff zero. Yeah. Okay. The, the same story. Cycle payoff zero. Okay. All other supposed. Okay. And then question whether there is a Nash equilibrium in mixed stationary strategies. It, can you prove hardness in some sense for this question? So do you, do you have an example of a, such a game without? Yes. Yeah. You have some example, well, then you should just um, be able to plug it in here. Um. And what will you get? So, so if, if you have some gadget where, where there is no... Um, there is an example without, without it, but essentially that's only only very few such examples. Let's say we have only one such example. But in order to be hard, you need probably infinitely many examples. Uh, you're asking if I need, yeah, well, this will generate infinitely many examples also. I mean, you just need one, one small game here, one gadget. So I'm saying that, that um, you could take this game here and, and plug in. without the, the thresholds. But then, then the question is for existence and we have cycles. Mm -hmm. Right, um, yeah. The other thing is, so here we have these chance nodes. So I mentioned there's a construction by um, Umels and Wojtzak where you, or a gadget of theirs that um, would allow you to get rid of these chance nodes. So this is not possible when in, in general when you have cycles and so on. So you need some properties of the game in order to eliminate these. Um, but in this case, you actually can. Yeah, I think I wanna, wanna end here. <laughs> <laughs>